Thomas mm -hmm. Junaid, uh, you know, this is now clear and open killing of Kashmiris. Uh, so, you know, a few couple of months back, we saw people who were not Kashmiris being targeted. And now there are just open attacks on Kashmiris. There were targeted killings of non-Kashmiris earlier. But now Kashmiris are being targeted. What is, the, what is the response on the ground among Kashmiris, among people in Srinagar to Kashmiris being killed and targeted, like today's attack? There is obviously a, a sense of anguish and a, a sense of um, loss and I hope that, that that sense of loss that we felt at the killings of non-locals uh, is also a sense of loss that should be commensurate with this sense of loss. Uh, I believe uh, that people are angry, people do realize, and people have long realized that violence has absolutely no, no justification, it has no cause. Uh, and if you look at the numbers, uh, most of the people an overwhelming majority of people who've lost their lives because of terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir are innocent civilians or personnel of the Jammu and Kashmir police. Uh, so, you know, this is uh, something that we've been living with and this is some, a wound that we've been, uh, you know, dealing with for a long time. Uh, and today's terror attack at Zevan is, you know, yet another manifestation of the brutality and uh, the ruthlessness of those elements of terrorism. Yeah, but it's a wound wound that Kashmiris have been living with. Uh, it's a wound inflicted by Pakistan. That's what you mean, right? Absolutely. There's, you know, you can't, there's no, there's no tiptoeing around that fact. Um, Pakistan has used terror as a state policy. Uh, they continue to use terror as a policy of uh, ensuring that Kashmiris don't see uh, a, a dawn of peace, they don't live normal lives, that another generation of Kashmiris is deprived of their childhood, is deprived of opportunities of growth, employment and advancement uh, like their counterparts in the rest of the world. Uh, it is very evident. Uh, I, I don't think Pakistan yeah, but Farooq has ever... Abdullah says, Farooq Abdullah says immediately, immediately around the time of the attack, Farooq Abdullah says, let's talk to the killers. We must talk to the killers. He draws an equivalence. He uses an opportunity like this to say, let's talk to the killers. Well, you do know, Arnab, that there are instances when Farooq Saab is in power and when he says that, you know, we should bomb Pakistan or when he says Kashmir ko, goli maro Kashmir ko. So don't, don't take Farooq Saab's utterances for any ideological stand. Uh, these are things that he says. These are seasonal things that he says. He, he advocates talks with Pakistan when he's in the opposition and when NC is in power, uh, they remain muted about this. These are just uh, desperate attempts to try and reap the, uh, you know, political dividends of appeasement to terror, of appeasing instability in Kashmir. And, and Farooq Saab has been known to say something in power and something entirely different when he is not in power. You know, I was seeing the pictures of, uh, of a policeman with his, with his colleague fighting for his life. Uh, you know, heart-wrenching picture, I may want to just play it here. If our producers can can pick it up and and uh, I I I feel I feel Janet that when when these incidents happen, uh, this particular group of people who advocate talks with Pakistan, a group of people you know people who I call uh, the human rights lobby, uh, which which strongly campaigns for Burhan Wani, Mannan Wani, all the terrorists, uh, they want this visual. And I'd like to play this visual full frame, please, Anand, if possible, so that people see. They want this visual to, to go away. Uh, they don't want this visual to stay. Of one Kashmiri holding another Kashmiri fighting for his life, targeted by the lashkar e -Toyba, targeted by Pakistan. They don't want this visual to stay. They want this visual to disappear by tomorrow morning. And that's why they put out these one-line tweets, like Mehbooba Mufti does, you know. Terribly sad. My condolences. Right? Omar Abdullah almost similarly says, terrible news. I condemn. That's it. And move on. Has to be a stronger response, Junaid, don't you think? There has to be a more 
more straightforward response, don't you think? You know, Arnab, the irony, the irony here is that both these families are heavily protected by the same police force. Uh, that, 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 that to me has always been the stark irony. The same young boys who protect you, who protect your families, uh, when they are attacked, when they are killed, if you can't muster the integrity and conviction to unequivocally condemn that attack, at least uh, do not uh, mix any political overtures or demands or political ideological stances in that condemnation. If you can't be unequivocal, don't at least rub salt in the wounds. Uh, it is a terrible tragedy, but we also have to understand that we have to start calling it terrorism. Uh, you, do you remember the last time we spoke uh, when the you know when the minorities were being targeted? I said one of the first things that we have to ensure is that as a society, as a community, as a political mainstream, we are unequivocal about the fact that there is no room for violence or terror. Period. We should not intersperse that with any political statements. And we should stop calling these people who attack our, uh, our police personnel, our security forces personnel, and our civilians and our non-local guests, we should stop calling them militants. Um, this is not militancy. This is not insurgency. This is pure terror. And their intention and aim is to terrorize, first and foremost, the people of Kashmir, who they ironically espouse to fight for. Uh, and, and, and the primary victims and targets of this terror are the innocent people of Kashmir, are the you know, local Kashmiri policemen. And I hope that with each passing day, that dawns on our society at a collective level, and that dawns on our polity, on our political leaders at a collective level, that let's do politics for governance and development, but let us not do ideological politics, which gives uh, a smokescreen to violence, to mayhem, and to bloodshed. Uh, you know, I actually think, Junaid, if I read the subtext of Mehbooba Mufti's tweet today, I think she's actually cheering the terrorists. You know, the, the ghastly thing is, Mehbooba Mufti gets provided security by these same people who are being killed by terrorists. But she seems to me to be almost cheering the terrorists on because she says, government of India's false narrative of normalcy in Kashmir today stands exposed, there has been no cause correction. First line, terribly sad to hear two, two policemen are killed and then almost cheering on the attack, uh, using the attack as political vindication. You know, standing behind the shadow of a, of a Hafiz Saeed almost cheering on the attack, she says, almost exultant about the attack, she says, look here, the government of India has been proven, uh, you know, proven to be wrong. So you're saying that lashkar e toiba has proven the government of India wrong by killing two policemen. How does that sound? How macabre does that sound? How opportunistic does that sound, Junaid? It sounds insane, uh, not just uh, opportunist. I think it unacceptable uh, you know if somebody were to ask her uh, madam uh, was the police or the security forces never attacked in your tenure uh, you know was that your failure as the chairperson of the unified command uh, in, in in 2000 and, uh, you know uh, 16 uh, were more than a you know 100 civilians young boys did they not lose their lives in law, law and order situations History doesn't start when uh, our former chief yeah. ministers want history to start. History, they, they have a baggage of history that they should be aware of before they uh, talk about it. And this is ghastly. You know, you look at uh, attacks, terror attacks around the world. Tell me which former premier of a state, which former head of a state or a territory uh, would actually pick up fault with the government, the democratic uh, government or the systems so or the institutions of a country, when terrorists attack uh, that country, that, that is not the moment to score about brownie points. You have to be unequivocal in the face of terrorist attacks. You can't analyze the failures. Uh, there is uh, a thin line between, uh, you know, analyzing what is happening and between justifying terror. And I agree with you, uh, you know, statements like these somehow sound like uh, tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. They're trying to sadistically, yeah. sadistically, yeah. Uh, you know, 
poke fun at, at the administration and say, see, the, milit- the, the terrorists and the, uh, you know, uh, yeah. the proponents yeah. of terror are leading to a failure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, talking, talking in that manner. I, I think she just doesn't mean anything. She doesn't mean those condolences at all. Jonet, thank you very much. <laughs>